In 1975, John Wayne starred in the adventure western film Rooster Cogburn. He reprises his role as U.S. Marshal Reuben Rooster Cogburn, and Katherine Hepburn co-stars in the film. It was written by Martha Heyer, and it's based on the character Rooster Cogburn, created by Charles Portis in his 1968 western novel True Grit. It's a story of an aging, one-eyed lawman whose badge was recently taken from him for a string of routine arrests that ended up in bloodshed. In order to earn his badge back, he has to bring down a ring of bank robbers that has hijacked a weapons shipment of nitroglycerin. It's directed by Stuart Miller, a longtime Hollywood producer, but he had only directed one film. And that film was When Legends Die, and that's based on the classic novel by Hal Borland. And this was all he had done director-wise prior to directing Rooster Cogburn. The film was shot in Oregon in the autumn of 1974, just west of Bend, Oregon, for the mountain scenes, and on the Deschutes River for the Whitewater Rapids scenes, and also on the Rogue River, in the counties of Josephine, Oregon, and Curry County, Oregon. Now, Richard Jordan plays Hawk in the movie, and it's funny that he actually admits that he decided to overplay his part because he thought the movie was going to be a flop. He just thought it was going to be a vast failure. And if anybody actually paid to see it, they were only doing so just to see the two main stars. He also said that he felt that Katherine Hepburn was about to die at any minute when they were filming the thing. Ironically, she outlived him by a decade. It just kind of shows what old Richard actually knew. Now, there had actually been plans for a third film featuring the character of Rooster Cogburn, and it was to be entitled Someday. But it was actually canceled when this movie proved to be only moderately successful and only a moderate hit at the box office. And the other reason was that Paramount Pictures was really concerned about John Wayne's age, and they thought that he was really getting too old to successfully carry a movie, and that his audiences were actually waning. John Wayne found this film just terribly hard to shoot and very difficult for him, particularly since he had just finished a grueling shoot on Brannigan, and he was really trying to recover from pneumonia at the time. Remember, he's only got one lung. That said that director Stuart Miller insisted on so many takes that eventually John Wayne snapped a few times and said, there's only so many times we can say these awful lines before they stop making any sense at all. Now, there's some real age discrepancies that you probably never notice, but are actually involved in the film. John Lormer, who plays Katherine Hepburn's father, was actually only one year older than she was. And although John Wayne and Katherine Hepburn refer to Struther Martin as old man, he is in fact 12 years younger than them. Now the role that Katherine Hepburn plays is Eula Goodnight, And prior to Katherine Hepburn signing on, they really thought about Betty Davis, Maureen O'Hara, Vanessa Redgrave, and Loretta Young for this part. And originally, John Wayne wanted Ingrid Bergman as his co-star. He then suggested that the character should be made younger and that Mary Tyler Moore should be cast. And he said this because he feared audiences would not want to see the movie if both stars were pretty old. The truth be known, John Wayne didn't really feel like that Stuart Miller was actually capable of directing this film. This whole film was pretty much a struggle for John Wayne. He wasn't in the best of health ever since he had had the cancerous lung removed. But 1974 was especially a hard year. And it's thought that he ended up catching pneumonia while he was in London. And then he was sick the whole time that he appeared on the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. And during this time, when he had pneumonia, he began coughing so hard 
that he actually damaged one of his heart valves, although they really didn't know that this was the problem until later on, even after the filming of this movie. They discovered this in 1978. So he was struggling with a damaged heart valve when he was filming this movie. And then he got viral pneumonia on top of that. This led him to decline actually traveling around to promote the movie. He just said he was too ill to do it. Now, H.W. Gim, who played the original Chen Li, Rooster's Chinese companion, had died in the intervening years since the original film. So the role was taken over by Tommy Lee, who died the year after this film was released. During the filming of the film, John Wayne was injured teaching his eight-year-old daughter to play golf. But real fortunately, his eye patch concealed the mark. This was definitely a labor of love for John Wayne because he sure wasn't there having much fun. He actually had to use an oxygen mask quite a bit while he was filming and on the set. Now there was some surprise when Katherine Hepburn accepted the role of Eula Goodnight. Since more than 20 years earlier, she had turned down the role of Geraldine Page in Hondo from 1953. And this was because she just wouldn't work with John Wayne at the height of the blacklist period. And even after she took the role, she felt like she was too old for the character. John Wayne was really greatly impressed with Katherine Hepburn's willful nature. He recalled to people that you should have seen her up there on those mountain locations. She can't ride a hobby horse, but she climbed right up on those horses and gave them hell. They offered her a stunt double, but Kate said that she doesn't sit straight in the saddle like she does. A daring location filming, the crew actually wore printed t-shirts that read, We love you, Brother John, on the front, and Sister Kate, too, on the back. John Wayne and Katherine Hepburn were reportedly pretty amused by all this. Richard Flesher was originally offered the director's job by the studio, and he accepted it. John Wayne, however, had director approval, and he was still kind of irked at Flesher having turned down the film North to Alaska in 1960, and he actually vetoed him as the director. Looking back on it, he felt like that he made a mistake and should have never hired Stuart Miller. Now, the studio already had said that if John Wayne became too ill to play Rooster Cogburn, the part was actually going to be offered to Marlon Brando. And there were some other choices that were kept in mind also. There was Charles Bronson, Richard Burton, Kirk Douglas, Clint Eastwood, and Gene Hackman. Katherine Hepburn's part is very similar to the one that she's most famous for, and that's of Rose Sayer and John Huston's The African Queen from 1951. But what did Katherine Hepburn really think about working with John Wayne? She was just amazed at his tendency to argue with everybody, especially the director during the filming. At the party to celebrate the last day of filming, she actually went up to him and told him, I'm glad I didn't know you when you had two good lungs. You must have been a real absolute mess. Losing a hip has mellowed me out too. But you, you're a mess. But the real truth about what Katherine Hepburn really thought about John Wayne was made note in a note that she actually wrote. She states, from head to toe, he is all of a piece. Big head, wide blue eyes, sandy hair, rugged skin lined by living and fun and character, not by just rotting away. A nose, not too big, not too small. Good teeth, a face that's alive with humor, good humor, and a sharp wit, dangerous when roused. His shoulders are broad, very broad. His chest is massive, very. When I lean against him, which I did as often as possible, 
I must confess, I am reduced to such innocent pleasures. This was thrilling. It was like leaning against a great tree. And as you can see with Katherine Hepburn, she was just in awe of John Wayne. And she was a big star in her own right. Now for John Wayne, this is the first and only role that he has ever reprised. In spite of having over 150 leading roles, Rooster Cogburn is the only character that he's played in more than one film. Now, this film received terrible reviews upon its release. Many of the critics just felt that it was too obviously derived from the African Queen and that both John Wayne and Katherine Hepburn were too old for their parts that they played. Now, all of this may be true, but if you watch this movie, it's still an enjoyable watch. And if you're a fan of John Wayne, as I am, you'll still enjoy watching it too. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.